Hello everybody. Today we're going to be starting chapter 5, Relations and Functions. What we're going to be building on is some of the aspects that we've learned in the past, writing equations to represent patterns in tables, graphing and analyzing uh, linear relations. Some of the big ideas for the chapter include a relation associates the elements of one set with another set. A function is a special type of relation for which an element of the first set is associated with a unique element of a second. So this is something we're going to talk about later on once we get into horizontal, vertical, x and y. Um, this is where for every value of x, there's only one value for y. And we'll, we'll look at uh, this later on in the chapter. A linear function has a constant rate of change and its graph is a non-vertical straight line. So a vertical straight line is one that goes uh, up and down, okay, so that's uh, not a function. Uh, and we're going to talk about um, some different ideas, okay. So new vocabulary we're going to learn, we're going to talk about what a relation is, an arrow diagram, function, domain and range, function notation, rate of change, a linear function, vertical and horizontal intercepts, vertical um, we use uh, most commonly in uh, the math that we're going to do is y and the horizontal intercept uh, we call it the x intercept okay um, the first section we're going to do today is uh, five decimal one how do we represent uh, relations so different ways to represent relations um, some of the definitions um, so we'll be using these terms as we work through the chapter a set is a collection of distinct objects an element is a uh, sorry, an element of a set is one object in that particular set. And a relation associates the elements of one set uh, to another. One way uh, to write a set is to list elements inside uh, braces or brackets. Okay, so I call them squiggly brackets, um, but these are called braces. So, for example, um, we can write the set of natural numbers uh, from 1 to 5 as 1. So open up your bracket one two three four five close your uh, braces or bracket and just remember the uh, the order of the elements uh, in the set it, it doesn't matter okay so to get an idea and a feel for this we're going to use um, an example they provided us with consider the set of fruits and the set of colors uh, we can associate fruits with their colors for example an apple, that's an element of the first set. It may have a color, that's the association between the two sets. And red is the element of the second set. So um, this set of order pairs uh, in the re relation looks like this. So we have apple, red, apple green, blueberry blue, cherry red, and huckleberry blue. So here's a couple of ways we can represent this. We can represent, represent this in what's called a table of values. So if we have a table here, so we can put the fruit in one column and the color in the second column. So the fruits we had, we had two apples, blueberry, cherry, and huckleberry. And the colors associated with that was the apple was red, the second apple was green, the blueberry was blue, the cherry was red, and the huckleberry was blue. Okay, so let's call it a table or a table of values. Uh, we call it a table of values, obviously, if we're, if we're uh, speaking about numbers. In this case, we're, uh, we're dealing with, uh, with words, um, so we just call it a table, all right? Um, and you'll notice the two columns each. Um, we can also um, use a uh, way of representing this data, or the, these, uh, these uh, sets, call, using what's called an arrow diagram. So um, I didn't put the apple in twice, and I didn't put the colors uh, red and blue in twice. So in the left column there of the arrow diagram, we had apple, blueberry, cherry, huckleberry. They were the, uh, I know we had five because we had the apple twice, but we, did, we don't need to repeat it. And the same with the colors in, this, in the second column there. We have blue, green, red. Now I know we had two blues and two reds, so we just have the arrows. And what you do is you put an arrow from one. Uh, to the other right so an apple was blue and red so you'll notice that there's uh, sorry green and red my apologies the apples green and red 
So we have the arrows going toward the green and the red. Uh, blueberry was just uh, there was only one blueberry and it was blue. There's only one cherry and that was also red. So two arrows going red and the huckleberry was also blue. Um, so that's just a way of uh, showing uh, the expressing the, the the information the two sets together using what's called an arrow diagram. Okay. Let's look at the first example, how we represent a relation given its table. So it's the same idea as the last um, question we just had there. Okay. So it says northern communities can be associated with the territories there. Consider a relation represented by the table. So we have the communities and the territory that they're in. So we um, here in Canada we have three territories. Um, the NWT is short for Northwest Territories. We have Nunavut and the Yukon. Okay. Um, and uh, I apologize for my pronunciation of some of the communities. We have Hay River, uh, Quellet, uh, Nanazvik, Old Crow, Whitehorse, and Yellowman. So describe uh, this relation in words. So to describe this in words, uh, the relation shows the association is located in from a set of northern communities to a set of territories. So the first column is the uh, the community, the set of communities. The second column is a set of territories. And um, how to associate those is is located in. So Hay River is located in the Northwest Territories. Old Crow is located in the Yukon, and so on. So how do we represent this relation? So, so far we've learned two ways. One is the order pairs, and the second is the arrow diagram. So the first one is um, what we do is we want to uh, let us know what each set represents. So the first set of elements is the communities. So the communities are the first elements in the order pairs. And the uh, second set of elements are the territories, um, and they're represented in the order pairs corresponding to the community. So they are given by the following order pairs. So Hay River, NWT, and so on. Okay, so an arrow diagram, we can do the same thing. Now remember, since there's only three territories and we have six communities, there's going to be arrows maybe going from one or more to the other. And it looks like there's going to be two going to each. So we'll do that next, drawing arrows from each. So all we do is we simply draw an arrow going from Hay River to Northwest Territories. We'll do the same thing again. We'll go, oh, sorry about that. We have the Quallet going to none of it. And then we have Nanzivik also going to none of it. Uh, next we have Old Crow. And that's going to the Yukon. Old Crow. Going to the Yukon. Next, we have White Horse, which also is located in the Yukon. Uh, or sorry, the Yukon as well. And the last one is Yellowknife, and Yellowknife is located in the Northwest Territories. So that's just how to do an arrow diagram from one column to the next. And remember just to draw your arrow from, so we're going from the first set to the second set, and is located in. Usually your first set is your X values, or your horizontal values. Once we go to a, um, and we show that uh, a different representation, and usually your second set of values or your y values are usually your vertical values. Uh, and we'll, we, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about with that in later examples. The next thing we have is example two. And example two says, uh, represent a relation given as a bar graph. So a bar graph is exactly what it sounds like. Um, you do bars that uh, are vertical um, and you go from there. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a table based on the data from this particular graph. Okay. Bring up all the information. 
information here. So, in the data, we have the uh, six, or, yeah, sorry, six different breeds of dogs here, and we have the corresponding average height of each breed of dog. So we'll fill those tables in, okay? So the breed of the dog, we'll just write the names in. So we have an Afghan hound. Uh, the next one we have is a Chihuahua. And again, um, you can correct me on my pronunciation later. Uh, I, I'm not really a, know much about dogs. We have a Corgi. Then we have a Golden Retriever. Uh, next, we have a German Shepherd. Oh, Shepherd, sorry. I forgot my H, my spelling, my apologies. And last, we have a uh, Malamute. Again, uh, for you dog lovers, you can correct me on my pronunciation. I'm doing my best with that. And then we have the mean height. Uh, that is related to each of those. We just go up to our data. So the Afghan hound, you can clearly see that it's between, so right here would be 70. So it's halfway between 70, so we can say that it's 75. You don't need to put centimeters. It's already in brackets here, so you don't need to put centimeters every time. All right. Uh, next, we have the Chihuahua, which is 20 centimeters. Next, we have the Corgi, which is 30. It's between 20 and 40 in your graph there. Next, we have the Golden Retriever, which is 60. Uh, the German Shepherd, which is, has an average uh, height of 60 as well. And the Malamute, which would be 65. It's halfway between 60 and 70. Okay. Next um, is what we just call the arrow diagram. All right, I'll get that. Sorry about that, just one second. So now what we'll do is we'll um, do the arrow diagram once again and the Afghan hound goes to uh, 75. And next we have the Chihuahua, which is 20. Next we have the Corgi, which was 30. Next is the Golden Retriever and the German Shepherd, both, both at 60. And last was the Malamute, which was at 65. And again, there's your arrow diagram. Okay. There are two check your understandings for those two questions. Uh, you can take a look at them and give them a, an attempt in your um, in your scribbler if you want on page 259 and 260. But they're pretty straightforward, um, these particular graphs. Um, but if you would like to try those, um, absolutely go and give it a try. So uh, that will be it for this video. In the next video, we will continue with examples three. Um, and then we will look at the uh, extra practice. All right. Thank you, everybody. And we'll uh, talk again soon.